Anthropic announces Cloud 3.5 Haiku, which is considered their fastest model, which they claim delivers advanced coding, tool use, and reasoning at an accessible price. So it's available via the APIs already, and also through Amazon Bedrock, Google Cloud, Vertex AI. In this video, what I will do is I'll go over a few of the things that we know about Haiku and how to make sense out of this release. So let's talk a little bit about the pricing. This has raised a lot of questions and some controversy in the community. And this is because if you look at this pricing for this Cloud 3.5 Haiku model, it starts at $1 per million input tokens and $5 per million output tokens. So what does this pricing mean and how we can make sense out of this? So to make sense out of this, typically what I like to do is I like to compare with other models that are of similar quality from other LLM providers. To do that, what I've done is I've prepared a little chart just to give you an overview of how this model compares in terms of pricing and also in terms of performance, because we do know some performance about this particular model already. So I've actually used the ChatGPT search feature to gather some data about prices for different models. So what we see here is the price for the CloudTree Haiku model, which is the new model, and this is the CloudTree Haiku all models. So this should be 3.5, and then this is Gemini 1.5, and this is GPD 4.0 mini. You can see the cost relationship here. Compared to the old Haiku model, the price of this new 3.5 Haiku model is 4X. So you can see how it's increasing from 1.25 to 5 for the open token cost, and then from 0.25 to 1 for the input token cost, and that's per million. And you will see how here in this chart, how it compares with other models such as Gemini 1.5 Flash and GPT-40 Mini. In a way, this model here, while being very performant on a variety of use cases and benchmarks, we're going to look into some benchmarks in a minute, it's very expensive compared to even the older model and compared to other models that exist out there, such as the Flash model and the GPT-40 Mini. And this is why a lot of people in the community are a bit puzzled about the price increase here. Now, we don't know too much about the price increase. From the announcement, we do know that the price increase, according to Entropic, is justified by how great this model is in terms of how it performs on several use cases and tasks. So it's all about performance in this case. I don't know if this is going to be a trend going forward, but this is rather surprising to see this huge spike in cost. And now the question is, is it going to be the same for the newer models that are coming? So the Opus model, for instance, I'm assuming it is. I'm assuming this is the pattern for Antrophic. I am not too sure about the other LLM providers such as OpenAI and Gemini, maybe they will follow, but that's not something that has been indicated so far from all the marketing and all the PR that has been done around these models. In fact, what I would have expected is lower costs for these models, especially these faster models, but it seems that it's not just about making these models faster, but also way more capable. And that's what was mentioned in the announcement. Now I want to show you here another chart I generated here for checking the performance of this model. So this one shows you on the GPQA, Diamond Benchmark, and the MAT Benchmark. So we have these two benchmarks here, how it compares with the other models such as GPT-40 Mini and Gemini 1.5 Flash. We can tell right away that Gemini 1.5 Flash is outperforming the other two models on this particular benchmark. So Gemini 1.5 Flash is a model that we use a lot and it's a very capable model. In fact, we use this model for a lot of reasoning tasks and a lot of agentic workflows. Gemini 4.0 Mini is also very capable, you can see here. So Cloud 3.5 Haiku is much closer to GPT 4.0 Mini than it is to Gemini 1.5 Flash on both of these benchmarks, which are quite important benchmark again, because these are challenging benchmark that test for not only math capabilities, but reasoning capabilities and so forth. That's a bit about the result here, how it compares. Now let's go back to the announcement. Okay, so let's keep reading here on the use cases. So it says with fast speeds, right? Wherever you want faster models, that's where you would apply something like Cloud 3.5 Haiku, the 4.0 Mini, or even the Gemini 1.5 Flash. 
So it says well suited for user facing products, specialized sub agent tasks. I would say this is for agentic workflows and generating personalized experience from huge volumes of data. These are the main use cases that were mentioned where Cloud 2.5 Haiku shines. So it's code completion, which makes a lot of sense because Anthropic is pushing a lot for code generation use cases. Interactive chatbots makes a lot of sense because of that latency problem. Data extraction labeling also, you might find that very useful in some domains. So it says here, it's especially useful for organizations dealing with large volumes of unstructured data across finance, healthcare, and research, and real-time content moderation, so moderation platforms. I think for the real-time aspect of some applications that are powered by these LLMs, I think Cloud 3.5 Haiku might be the best option. But there are other options, as I was discussing, right? There is the Flash model. And there is also the GPT-40 mini model, which have more reasonable pricing. So the big question here is that for a lot of developers, why would you choose this model over the others when potentially you might get better performance and more favorable costs? So that will be, I think, the main question that developers need to figure out, especially developers that are already committed to Anthropic on using their models. And I think Cloud 3.5 Haiku obviously can be combined with these other models. And if the idea is that a Haiku model can be combined with you know, a 3.5 Sonnet or even an Opus when that comes out, that would be an interesting one too, then maybe that justifies it. But as far as I can tell, I'm not too sure. I think I'm like developers right now, very confused about this pricing. It almost feels like it's a mistake or it was done intentionally, maybe because they are thinking that they might need to do some price adjustments for their upcoming models like Opus, for instance. If that is the case, then you know that will be interesting to see how the community receives this as well. I always say this is the reason why it's important to be experimenting with a variety of models as opposed to just committing to one specific LLM provider. Today is really the time to be experimenting and familiarizing yourself with these different LLM providers whether they are providing you the right capabilities, also if they are providing you the right latency for your application, the right pricing as well, that's going to be very important. So here are some benchmark results, and we already went through some of them, but unfortunately here you would see that they are comparing with models that I don't think it's fair. They should have included here instead the Flash model and the other model, which is GPT-40 Mini. I think those are models that might be of the same class as this particular model. And that's why I did that comparison. So in summary, I would say it's about speed, it's about price, it's about performance, but definitely keep track of this price because it can get pretty expensive, especially if you're using it in like chatbot settings and analyzing very large scale data, for instance, converting on structured data to structured data, or even if you're implementing agentic workflows with these models, just pay very close attention to cost because it can get expensive really quickly. And I would say maybe for smaller applications where there is not a lot of scaling happening, scaling in terms of usage, I think it might make sense to experiment with this model, but, and they recommend 3.5 Haiku for critical use cases where low latency matters, as I was saying, chatbots and code completions. And that'll be it for this video. Those are a few key points from this announcement and just sharing you how I make sense out of this at the moment. There's definitely gonna be more information that's gonna be released, more experiments around this model, how to justify the cost. Maybe Atropic has something in mind that they're not telling us and also where to even apply it and how to even apply it. So we're gonna be doing some more experiments on this model. We're gonna be using an, the APIs to experiment with this model and we'll be doing a follow-up video to that and also be trying to figure out which use cases this particular model would make sense to use. So more on that in a future video. So stay tuned for that. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.